Okay, so function or not a function. So I already got an answer of the vertical line test. If we have a vertical, if you take a vertical line and you draw it straight down vertically on a graph, it should not touch anything twice. So as I run this line along here, see how right there, two points are touching line at the same time? So this is not a function. Okay, what about this one and this one? They're both functions. Okay, this is how I remember this. This is how you know something's a function. Okay, when something's a function when it functions correctly. Machines function correctly, specifically a soda machine, all right, or a candy machine. So, on this side, it's going to be like the name of the candy. I like pizza is my favorite. Let's pretend it's a pizza menu. So up here it's going to be the name of the pizza, and over here it's going to be the cost of the pizza. So the number three pizza is a dollar. The number two pizza is five dollars, and the number negative six pizza is five dollars as well. Can one pizza and another pizza be the same cost? Right? If it's sausage and it's pepperoni, both of those could be the same cost, right? So this is a function. Yes. <coughs> Let's do the same thing here. So the pizza number five is two dollars. Looks like this one is going to do the same thing. Is two dollars. The pizza number ten is negative two dollars. Pizza number fifteen is negative two dollars. The pizza twenty is negative two dollars. Is this a function? Yes. How could I change this so it would not be a function? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. <coughs> so let's say this instead of being 10 is, I'm just going to take a picture of it. So now it's a piece number 5 is $2 and piece number 5 is negative $2. Can a pizza, the same pizza, be two different costs? No, it can't. So that doesn't function correctly. Okay? And if you were to plot that, it would be something like pizza number five. So if I go over five, one, two, three, four, five, and up two, that would be a point here. And then the other pizza would be five, negative two. See if I did a vertical line test, how it would fail. Okay. So all of these things are related. I can write this one like this. Does anybody know what this type of function is called? What do we call when we have a set of coordinates and we set it up like that? We put it in this little picture here. Do you guys remember what that's called? Yeah, exactly. It's called a mapping. So this is a mapping, right? This is a table, and this is a coordinate grid or a coordinate graph. Okay? Do you guys kind of remember a little bit of functions now? Okay, so let's use them. Students will be able to analyze graphs of relations and find functional values. I want you to be able to compare and contrast a functional relation as opposed to a non-functional relation. So we're talking function, non-function. All right, let me pass these out for you. Three, two, one. Okay, Cartesian coordinate plane. So this one is composed of an x and y axis quadrant. A coordinate plane has four quadrants. Where is quadrant one? Top right corner. So here's one. Here's two, here's three, and here's four. A relation. When we talk about something or a relationship between the two things, 
That's the way I like to remember. It's a set of ordered pairs. Why would I say a set of ordered pairs is a relationship? Anybody know? Well, especially when we're talking about a function. If you put something in, you get something out, right? Make sense? Okay, domain. What would the domain be? Okay, so normally we think of this as the x coordinates. I'm going to say that I was going to say explain this differently. Give me a second. Call it the relationship with x. So the range would be the relationship with y. And a mapping. A mapping is when we take a relation and <coughs> we map it out into like little bubbles like this. That would be a mapping. Okay, what makes something a function? Each domain or each x value is paired with exactly what makes it a function? Paired with exactly what? one y value or one range. There can be two different domains that are paired to a range, right? They can share a range, but the domain can only have one range. One to one function. One to one means one range, I'm sorry, one domain, one range. No sharing. So on that pizza menu, no pizza is, is a different, I mean, no pizza is the same price. If it's pepperoni, it's a different price than sausage. That's a one to one function. Okay? Make sense? Everybody gets their own price. Okay, continuous means a line or a smooth curve. So no breaks. Continually flowing. So if I had a function like this, are there breaks in that? Yes. There are breaks in that. Even though it's in a line, maybe I shouldn't put it in a line. Is this better? It's kind of confusing when I put the dots in a line, you think it's a line, right? So if I have something like this on a graph, this would be called discrete. So it's a set of individual points. We're not talking about a flow, we're talking about discrete singular items, right? That's why they call it discrete. Set of individual points. I'll let you guys finish up copying that down. Okay, so most of you don't have whiteboard markers, so we're just going to have to work on this. Just on your paper, or I don't think it's... Oh, you do have it on your page. Okay, so there's number one. Give you about 30 seconds to discuss with your shoulder partner whether or not that is a function or not. Okay, I need a volunteer. Is this a function or not a function? 
Stand up if you think it is not a function. Okay, sit down. So the majority of you think it's not a function. Okay, let's call these pizzas. So this is a sausage pizza, and this is a pepperoni pizza. Why don't you guys come up with the analogy before you do it? So if this is a sausage pizza, a sausage pizza costs twenty-one dollars and twenty-five dollars. Does that work? <laughs> Is it a function? No, it's not a function. Good. Okay, take a look at that. Oh, that's number three. You can't do that. Do that one. Fun. All right, function or not a function? Raise your hand if you think it's a function. All right, fantastic. Can anybody explain to me why it is a function? But 5 is 105 and 15 is 105. How could that be? Okay. 15 and 5 aren't, okay. How about each one could share the same range, right? So if this one was a sausage and this one was a pepperoni, a sausage could be $105 and a pepperoni could be $105 and that would work, right? You'd be crazy to buy it, but it would work. <laughs> All right, number three. See if you can figure out whether that one's a function. One. Okay, who, who thinks they know? Who'd like to share? You don't want to share? Okay, let's hear. Well, none of the X numbers are the same as the Y, so... It is. Yes. It's yes, right? It's not. It's yes. It is. It is because it's not put into a... Okay, this is how I do these. All right? The only time you have to worry about these is ask yourself, do any X's repeat? The only time you're going to run into trouble is if one of the X's repeats because then it's on the menu twice, right? Okay, so it is a function. It is a function. Yes? Okay. Does that make sense? In order for it to have two different prices, wouldn't it have to be on the menu twice? Yeah. Right? And it, can it have two different prices? No. No. You can have multiple ranges, right? As long as they don't belong to, well, they can belong to different functions. That's why you can have multiple. Okay. All right. So the yes, this, so this one is, no, this one is not a function. Because actually two repeats, right? If I were to write this out in a table, wouldn't I have two twice? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is not. I should change my color. This one is not a function. This one, yes, this is a function. And yes, this one is a function. Try the last one. Yes. Because? Because if you are a warning text, then it'll touch one side of the curve. It'll touch somewhere twice, right? It'll intersect the graph twice. That would be proper terminology, correct? Or academic vocabulary would be that if I did a vertical line test, it would intersect the graph more than once. We're going to be graphing these this year. The graph of a hyperbola. All right. It's my favorite unit, the conics unit. All right, moving on. Pencils down. Rebellion. Rebellion. All right, so the first thing we're going to do with this, we're trying to figure out whether this is a function or not. And we're going to state the domain and the range. I've got all these steps under here. I might as well just take them off. Okay. So first we're going to graph it. So I have 2 comma 8, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, kind of off the graph there. 3, 5, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
five, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, up there, five, and one, negative two. One, negative two. Thank you. All right, so there's a graph. Vertical line test. Does this pass my vertical line test? So if I take this line and I go across, only intersecting once, only intersecting once, once, once. It passes my vertical line test. So check. Domain and range. Okay. The domain is the set of all the numbers that are associated with the x-axis. So if I were to... Let's try that again. If I were to highlight the x-axis, we'll do this one more. If I were to highlight the x-axis as I'm going along the x-highway, one, going along the x-highway, two, going along the x-highway. Sometimes it helps to do that. Three and five. So when it comes to x values, it's everything that interacts with my x axis. Every single one of those values interacts with the x axis in some way. In order to get to five five, don't I have to go over five? That's what that means. So if I'm going in this direction, if it intersects in any way, and if I'm going in this direction, if it intersects in any way. How do I intersect the y-axis? As I'm going up the y-axis, when do I come in contact with any set of values? Well, if I'm going down, where? <coughs> Negative 2. As I'm going up, what's the next value? 5. And I continue to go up? 8. I think domain and range are one of the most difficult concepts for kids to really get. They just they seem so abstract. So I'm going to do my best to try and make that really concrete for you, okay? It's kind of more difficult when it's just sets of points like this. I think it's easier when it's a line because then when it's a line, I can take this shading right here and we can talk about everywhere it's touching the X, right? Okay, so make sure you have this down. Oh, finally, number four would be discrete or continuous. Is this graph or this relation discrete or continuous? It's discrete. So we'll cir circle discrete. This one happens to be discrete. Why? Can somebody tell me why it's discrete? It doesn't continue on, right? It's just sets of points that are plotted on a graph. Give you a second to make sure that's copied down in your notes. Okay, so the question has been brought up a little bit of confusion about the domain and range. So let's put some values to it. Let's talk about, um, an amusement park. So at an amusement park, you can get into, what's it called? It's not Scary Farm. You can go to Not Scary Farm if you are giving an age limit. 15? Okay. So let's say this is 13, 14, 15, 16 on the x value. Okay. So, and height would be how about 50 inches, 52 inches, 54 inches, 56 inches. So I'm going to say you can't get in an Osbury farm unless you are in this range right here. Have 
How about that? So what does that mean to you? You have to be at least 15, right? And you also have to be what? 52 inches or more. So my domain is only when we're talking about the relationship of the x values. The x values are the ages, right? So the domain would be x such that x is greater than or equal to what? 15. You've got to be older, either 15 or older. And your range values would be y such that y has to be greater than or equal to what? Does that help? So your domain is when you're talking about all the x values or everything that is in the relationship that has to do with the x-axis. I should say, let's highlight that. It has to do with the x-axis, these numbers. That's why we're talking about those in domains. And then range is everything that has to do with these numbers on the y, which goes with the range. A little bit better? Yeah? Okay, let's move on. Your turn. So go ahead and graph these points. Then do a vertical line test. Tell me whether or not it's a function or not. Give me the domain. Give me the range. Tell me whether it's discrete or continuous, please. Okay, so this is what I got for number four. I plotted my points, right? Or I plotted my relation. This is a relation, right? The set of points. It does not pass the vertical line test because right here it intersects the line twice. My domain is 2, 3, 4. Why not I write 2 twice? Because as I'm going along, don't I say, oh, it hits the 2, right? Do I need to say it hits the 2, too? No, I don't need to say it hits the 2 twice. I can just say it intersects 2 on the x-axis, it intersects 3, and it intersects 4. As I'm going on my range, I'm going to start with my negative values first, right? So it intersects with negative 2, then 2, then 3, then 4. You kind of do a line test this way with your x's and the other way with your y's. All right, any questions so far? Oh, yeah, and it's discrete. It's not a continuous line, it's discrete. <coughs> Next one. Okay, pencils down. So I know behavior of graphs, so I can just look at this and tell you whether or not this is... Let's talk about that, because this is the way I teach. All right, so... You guys notice this? What is that? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me what it looks like on a graph? It's a parabola. Good job. It's a parabola. All right. So if this is a parabola, is the parabola smiling upward or downward and why? It's upward because it's positive. So it looks something like this. Correct? What would it mean if I took, so this is a parabola like this on the, right there at the origin. What if I did this? Does anybody know? What happens to that parabola? It shifts up one. Oh, look at I lost the little tail of it. It shifts up one. So let's look at this. X equals Y squared. Let me cover this up for a second. <coughs> what do you think this is compared to this one? It's on the side. Good. So not only is it on the side, what else do we know about it? What does the negative 1 do? You guys almost have it. You're getting a little bit more confident. So I'm going to do this one in red. So this part would make it do this. This part would make it shift back one. Back it up one, right? Make sense? So is this a function? 
Oh, look, I have a graph right here. <laughs> okay, I didn't need it, right? We are going to plot the points, though. Okay, so traditionally, the way a traditional teacher would teach is that you use this table. You plot, you put in points, right? So I'm going to put in x values. What x values would you use? This is your graph right here, by the way. Without even... Let's come back and do this later. Let's challenge ourselves, right? Okay, so graph it. Does it pass the vertical line test? No. no. Do I know my domain and my range? No. Absolutely, I do. Absolutely, I do. Let's talk about X. Okay, so if I were to go down the X highway, does, does this graph, the red, whatever's in red, does it, when does it start interfering? Negative At negative one. And it continues to interfere, right? If I were to plot from here, I would have a point here and here. It continues to interact with my X. I could also do that by, let me highlight where it interacts with X. Doesn't it start interacting with X on my X axis at negative one? Mm -hmm. So my domain would be X such that X is greater than or equal to negative one. All the values from negative one and greater are all my domains. Does that help a little bit? Okay, so that's my domain. I'm going to redraw my picture down here and we're going to talk about the range. Let's do the range in green. So this is going to be just a sketch. So here's my graph. I'm going to draw it and then I'm going to shift it. All right. Let's talk about when it's interfering with the Y. So think about the Y axis. Okay, so I'm starting at zero, zero, and I'm going up. When does it interact with Y? You think, right? But yeah. Okay, if I'm talking, this is where it gets confusing. Let me ignore this for a second. If I were to say, where does the line cross when X is at zero? Okay, if we're going up the Y, does the graph ever intersect with Y? I'm going to use a line. When we're here, does the graph, in, or is it, I'm on the Y at zero. Is the graph intersecting it? Yes, it's intersecting it right here, right? Is the graph intersecting it now? Is the graph intersecting it now? Is the graph intersecting it now? 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 Technically? Yes. Why? Because it keeps going and going and going and going. So isn't it always going to intersect the Y as it's going up? Forever in the upper direction. What about if I'm going down? Is it intersecting? 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 See that? Yeah. It's always going to be intersecting because it's always going to be going out like that. Out like this, out like this. So if you're talking about the range, my range would be what? <coughs> y such that
everything, all Y values work. All the Y values work. So it's kind of kind of funky, right? If you want to test the Y the range, you would use a horizontal line. If you want to test the domain, you would use a vertical line, right? Do you see how as I'm going along with my vertical line, it doesn't, it's not, is it ever going to intersect it out here? No. It's not until it hits negative one. Do we have to start talking about X values? They don't exist in this graph. Anything smaller than negative one for your X. Okay. Now, if you didn't get that, if your head hurts from even talking about it, don't worry. We'll continue to talk about it. To me, that should have been solidified in algebra one. All right, but I think even myself, I'm still struggling trying to solidify that rather than just telling kids in algebra one, it's all the X's and all the Y's. You have to really understand what it means, right? And it's not an easy thing to just be like, oh, yeah, I totally get it. So we'll practice that and practice that and practice that, all right? All right, moving on. How much more do I have to get through? Not many. Oh, do we want to do it the old-fashioned way? Okay, so what would you plug in? Now that you know what the graph looks like, what would you put in as an input for X? How do you, I mean, some of you have already done this. Where do you start? You start at the middle, right? So if I plug in zero, what am I going to get for X? Actually, it's harder to do it this way. It'd be easier to do the Y first, huh? Plug in zero for Y, what do you get? Negative one. What do you want to plug in for Y here? One, what would you get? Zero? Does that work? Zero, one, well, my graph's not perfect, but what if I put in one for negative one for Y? What am I going to get? Yeah, symmetric? What else what would be your next one for Y? Two. If I plug in two, what do I get? If I plug in two for Y, I'm going to get three. So two, three. I almost hit that spot, right? So what if I plug in negative two? What am I going to get? Three. But if you know behavior of graphs, you don't need that, right? Because that's kind of hard to do, right? When it's turned sideways instead of up, you're kind of doing backwards. I won't require you to do this. I want to know what this means right here, okay? And we'll keep talking about this over and over and over again. All right, moving on. Your turn. All right, pencils down for a second. I want to talk about behavior. Who thinks they can guide me along with this one? Come on, All right, Ben, let me hear. First of all, do you think you could tell me what the parent graph of this one is? Y equals what? No? No idea? Okay, then describe it to me. Go ahead and describe it. Okay, what do you think this line looks like just by looking at it? Okay, so it's going a negative slope. Perfect, because of that right there. What else? Is it a regular slope? Is it really, really steep? Or is it really, really not so steep? Anybody know? It's regular. Okay. All right. Here's a parent graph. Y equals X. Thank you. I think this is more important, honestly. Here's a parent graph. Going right through the middle. When you've got a negative sign, just like Brandon said, look what happens to your graph. It goes in the opposite direction. As it, the 2 means it's greater by 2, so it's steeper. And what does the plus 1 do? It makes it shift up one. So that would be that graph right there. 
without doing any of this work right here. All right, you guys can pack it up. Thank you.